The Mutual Broadcasting System proudly presents the new series of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney, transcribed, starring Jay Johnson in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Bola as Miss Miller. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law, all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. In a moment, Mr. District Attorney and the forgery proof note. But first... If you're a teenager or older, you can play a vital part in the defense of our country. How? By joining the Ground Observer Corps. The Ground Observers have been set up to supplement the radar defenses of our country. If we're not to be caught unprepared, we must act now. The Ground Observers are located on the east and west coasts and in the northern Middle West. When the Ground Observer System is extended to the rest of the country, 300,000 more volunteers will be needed. Now... These volunteers contribute a few hours of their spare time each week, an average about four hours as usual. All Americans from teenage up are eligible to become sky watchers. No matter where you live, a bombing attack would affect you. If Los Angeles, Chicago, or New York were attacked, it would affect every farmer in North Dakota and miner in Montana. So why don't you join the Ground Observer Corps? Write or telephone your nearest civil defense center. This message was brought to you as a public service. Seven floors below the district attorney's office is the police laboratory for the county. It is here that a state-employed chemist and spectrograph expert bends over his work with nerve-wracking concentration. Jake Malmeister is alone with his work, except for the unauthorized person who stands at his elbow... Watching. Jake, it's sensational. Shut up, Roiger. You upset me. Jake Malmeister is working over a highly polished copper plate that has been coated with a thin film of wax. Etched into the wax is a design which appears legally only on the front of $10 bills issued by the United States Treasury. When Jake Malmeister completes the last hair-fine scroll on the picture of Alexander Hamilton, he lays down his engraving tool. There. It's finished, Roger. If even Rembrandt couldn't do better. Uh, what a setup. Right in the police laboratory. Equipment, acid, microscopes. I tell you, Jake, it's sensational. The setup? On my work. Jake, don't I always say you're an artist? Not too often. Well, <laughs> you are. Yes, I know. Did you ever hear of the famous forgery proof hundred mark note in Germany? No? <laughs> it was in 1915. It was my design, too. But this is even finer. You're the best, Jake. The best there is. Which is naturally why the state hires me as laboratory expert. Sure, sure, Jake. But now, Roiger, suppose we discuss payment. Half now, and half when the plates are delivered. When can we start printing? The plates will go into the after bath tomorrow night. Couldn't you finish them now? Oh, please, it's after midnight. I'm tired. And I... <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> yes. You nearly always do, don't you, Jake? Pay me, Roiger. Now. <laughs> okay, Twenty-five hundred now. Twenty-five hundred more when you deliver the plates. Thank you, Oiga. You uh, have everything else. Shovers set up in eight key cities. The paper is particularly good. How did you get it? Uh, it's my secret. In all forgery cases of banknotes or bills, 
It's usually the paper that is wrong. Yeah, you can always find somebody who'll get you anything, provided you can pay for it. Ha! Think of it, Jake. $24,000 a day. Yes. Day after day after day. <laughs> hey, Jake, you sure you don't want to come in with me? I am an artist. I am not a crook. <laughs> Splitting hairs, aren't you? I was commissioned to do a work of art for a fee. That is all. Uh, this work of art is right. I never figured a forgery could be this perfect. Forgery? This is not a forgery. This is an exact copy. Perfect and flawless. They will never be detected. They are not just identical with the real thing. They are the real thing. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Chief, uh, mm-hmm. what keeps Jake Malmeister here so late? He worked last night until after midnight. And what were you doing out until after midnight, Miss Money? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now look, I came past the building in a cab on my way home from the theater. Oh. The lights in the uh, police lab were on. I saw Jake through the window as he was leaving. As a matter of fact, I'm worried about Malmeister. Oh? Yes, he's been a lot of help to me on a lot of cases. A worry, Chief? But he's been drinking on the job. Harrington caught him a couple of times last month. Oh, people who are frustrated sometimes do drink. Yeah, maybe so. And this last week I've been piling work on him. All the documents from the Riordan case to say nothing. A couple of hundred infrared photographs of the powder marks on the girl's clothing. Mm. Oh, he's... He, he's such a sad little man. So mm. lonely. Say, Chief. Yes? You know, you work so hard yourself that sometimes you forget other people aren't able to keep up with you. Mm. Now, there's nothing helps a man's morale like a little pat on the back now and then. It's five o'clock. Let's go down to the lab and say good night to Jake. Okay, let's go. Chief, I, I guess he quit early tonight. I don't see him around anywhere. Uh, fine he's detective, gone home. fine detective you are, Miss Miller. What do you mean? Well, there's his hat and coat. Oh. He's probably gone out for a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, have you ever taken a good look at his books? Oh, never have. Yeah, take a look at this. Photography by polarized light. And differentiation of inks and their chloride and sulfate migration. Golly. Forensic chemistry and charred documents. Mezzo tin engravers to 1850. Well, quite a reader, isn't it? Yeah. Say, look at this one. The life of Rembrandt. Uh-huh. <laughs> the life of Rembrandt in a police laboratory. Poor Jake. Yes, he wanted so much to be an artist that he... Yeah. What, Chief? He's hollowed out the inside pages of this book. Look. Chief, there's something hidden in here. Uh, wrapped in cotton. Why, they're plates. Hey, Miss Miller, look. Look at these. Well, what are they? Why, even possessing these things is illegal. They're plates for $10 bills. Chief, you don't mean that Jake... Oh, no. That's incredible. It's fantastic. You mean Jake was... He, he, he was going to print them? There's the answer to your overtime. That's why he works late. Oh, I just can't believe it. Why, Jake's our friend. He's a brilliant man, and he's helped us so many times. Yeah, I'm wrap sure that... these up, Miss Miller, and take if... them up to my office and lock them in my desk. All right, Quick, Chief. before Jake comes back. Well, what are you going to do? Well, this concerns my own staff. I'm going to try to handle it quietly. Hurry, Miss Miller. Well, Chief, maybe it's just a hobby. Yeah, so was Bluebeard's. Get upstairs with these plates and then go on home. I want to talk to Jake Malmeister alone. Yes, sir. But, Chief... Yes? Please give him a chance to explain. He'll have to explain to the Treasury boys. Hello, Harrington. Say, something's happened. Come down to the lab, will you? Uh, no, no, finish that up. About 20 minutes is fine. Wrong? Yes, yes, I think so. Oh, and listen, send your stenographer over to the personnel department and bring down Jake Malmeister's records... Yes, do that, will you? And uh, hurry it up, will you, Harrington? Right. Good evening, sir. Hello, Jake. It's been a long time since I have had a visit from the district attorney. Usually I go to your office, don't I? Yes. 
You been drinking again, Jake? Well, maybe just... Uh... I've been looking over your life of Rembrandt. You what? Relax. Relax, Jake. They're gone. There. Miss Miller has... Give them to me. They're mine. Mine. Take your hand off me, Jake. Relax, will you? They're mine. Mine. What are plates for $10 bills doing in this building? Well, I... That's a federal offense, Jake, even possessing them, you know. Oh. Like a Look common out. thief, you, you steal, Watch you... Watch it. Put that bottle down. Don't no, be crazy. Don't. Do you want to get hurt? Do you? Don't make things worse than they are. Do you? I... It... Mr. District Attorney continues in just a moment, but first... There's something in the air, something new in Mutual's air. Star names in stellar productions are adding their shine to the glittering roster of outstanding entertainment on your Mutual station. Such famous luminaries as Madeline Carroll, Arlene Francis, and Betty Clooney bring you programs that run the gamut from serious drama to gay humor to popular music. And that's not all, not by far. There are Sir Cedric Hardwick, Peter Laurie, David Ross, Duncan Hines, Edward Arnold, Jay Justin, and George Sanders as well. So many stars are almost breathtaking. And you'll find the kind of programming they bring you is breathtakingly different, too. Their shows on Mutual are new in many ways. You'll find they add a brand new slant to your concepts of entertainment. But that's not all, either. Your own favorite time-tested stories and characters are not neglected. So, remember... It's your mutual station that has something different. Stay tuned throughout the day, throughout the week, and hear for yourself over most of these stations. Fool, you drunken, stupid, wizened little crouch dog. Oh, you don't hit me. I came right to your hotel. What did you slug him for? Well, I, I don't know. You are I... drunk. No. Well, where are they? Where are those plates? The girl has them. His assistant. Who is she? Her name is Miller. Like, I couldn't help it. When he said the plates were gone, I... I lost my head. Yes. What did you do with him? I, I dragged him into the dark room and locked the door. You didn't kill him? No, no, no. But they may not find him until morning. Yes, I... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm so upset. All right, all right. Where does this Miller dame live? Can you take me to her? Yes, she has an apartment. She live alone? Yes. All right. Then let's go see her. I've got ways of making people talk, especially women who live alone. Why, Harrington, I don't know where he is. I just got home myself. I left him in Jake Malmeister's office. Sure, yeah, that's where he told me to come. When mm-hmm. I got there, he left. Well, he may have gone out with Jake. Uh, there's been some trouble. Trouble? Uh, yeah, uh, trouble with Jake. But I know the chief's all right. Jake Malmeister couldn't hurt a fly. Yeah, was Malmeister drunk? Uh, say, Harrington, uh, there's somebody at the door. I'll call you back. And don't worry. I'm coming. Wh- why, Jake? Miss Miller, I... I'm in terrible trouble. I should hide from the chief. Why, no, Jake. I thought he was with you. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Miss Miller, Mr. Oiger. How do you do? Oh, hello. Uh, well, J- Jake, what is it? Can I help you? Miss Miller, please. Could we talk to you for a minute, please? We have both worked for him for such a long time, and uh, I'm in terrible trouble. Why, of course, Jake. Uh, come in. Thank you. Okay, Jake, lock it. Lock it? Say, hey, Jake, what is this? Who are you? Now, look here. You unlock that door this instant or I'll... Miss Miller, you make one move, you'll get a bullet through your beautiful blue eyes. I want those plates. Oiger, you said... Shut up, Jake. But you promised you wouldn't hurt her. Miss Miller, and I want those plates. (laughs) Don't hit... Shut up, Jake. (laughs) All right, Miss Miller, where are they? I haven't got them. Miss Miller... I'm not fooling you. <laughs> don't, don't hit her. She's my friend. Well, she'll be dead if she doesn't talk. Now, listen, Miss Miller, I'm what's known as a con man. All my born days, I've needed money. And at last, I figured a way to make it quick. 24000 a day, you understand? I, I haven't got those plates. That's all I have to say. Jake, 
You said the DA told you she'd taken them. He did. Please, Miss Miller, tell us. I don't want him to hurt you anymore. See, it's taken me a long time, Miss Miller, but at last I found an artist. I got a whole organization set up, all ready to push those bills. So I want those plates, Miss Miller, and I'm going to get them. Are you? You're going to talk in the next ten minutes. Or, baby, you're never going to talk again, ever. I'm going out in your kitchen and put on the kettle. <laughs> you know what happens to a lobster. Well, baby, have you any idea what I can do to you with boiling water? We'll return to Mr. District Attorney in just a moment. Some like it hot with the fierce clash of man's war against crime, and some like it cold with the dedicated purpose of a vigilant fight against evil. And some like it with the touch of the unknown. But practically everybody likes a good mystery. And Mutual brings programs to suit any preference. There's Counter Spy, the spine-tingling exploits of David Harding in his everlasting battle to preserve our country's security. High Adventure stars the adventure hero George Sanders, while Bulldog Drummond presents the suave and sophisticated private detective played by Sir Cedric Hardwick. And with his own unique brand of hair-raising narration... Peter Laurie brings Nightmare. With great stars and great shows, you can't go wrong when you dial Mutual for mystery. Walk hand in hand with suspense, danger, and intrigue. Hear Counter Spy, High Adventure, Bulldog Drummond, and Nightmare every week over most of these stations. Oh, what have I gotten her into? Yes, hello. That the district attorney? That's right. Want to talk about Miss Miller? Yes. Want to keep her alive? Of course I do. Play it smart? If I have to. I believe me, smart boy, there's no other way. You pull the racket-busting routine on me and your girl Friday will get it. I'm not fooling. I know you're not. So you'll cooperate? I'll cooperate. Be on the 315 train for Bennington City tomorrow afternoon. That's Sunday. I know the days of the week. I learned them in school. Yeah, but did you learn what's good for you? I think so. All right, sit in the last car on the north side next to the windows. If you're alone and everything looks on the level, I just might sit beside you. But if you're not alone... Yes? Well, let's put it this way, Mr. D.A. You double-cross me... And your girlfriend will be of no use to anybody except an undertaker. Hello. Hello. Well, if it isn't the district attorney... Hello. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks. Hey, you want to get right to the point? It's usually the quickest way. Yes. I, um, had to use some boiling water on your girlfriend. That shakes you, doesn't it? Yes. Smart kid, isn't she? I think so. Worked for a long time, hasn't she? Yes. Well, if you want to see her again, no funny stuff. You get it? Got it. She says you gave her the plates in Malmeister's office. Right. She took them to your office, locked them in the desk. Right again. They still there? No. Where? In my pocket. Oh, Yeah. Mr. Alexander Hamilton's picture is pressed against my heart right now. Well, can I have them? Why not? Here, wrapped in my handkerchief. Guaranteed, not even scratched. Uh, you do think a lot of this Miller dame, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> you sure do. Hey, there's only one plate here. That's right. Where's the other one? Check, checked. You know, in a check room. 
The main baggage check room on the ground floor of the railway station. And the claim check? In an envelope. I mailed it. Where to? To the district attorney's office. Yeah, smart, aren't you? I get by. When Miss Miller walks into my office, I'll give you the claim check. It's sort of uh, life insurance. At the moment, neither one of us can get the plate. That makes Miss Miller a lot safer, doesn't it? Could be. I know your type. I know exactly what your next move will be. <laughs> Character, aren't you? In fact, I kind of like you. I'll see you again. Yeah. I'll call you. Don't worry. Don't you. So long. Oh, uh, mind giving me back that handkerchief? Miss Miller gave it to me. Sentimental value. You know. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Too bad I can't trust you. You have no other choice. When Miss Miller is safe, you'll get that claim check. Take it or leave it. I may leave it. But stay close to your phone tonight. Harrington, I haven't much time. I've got to do this my way. Okay, Chief, you're the boss. Um, this man's smart and ruthless. He may not fall for it, he may kill Miss Miller anyway, but Harrington... Yeah? I'm not taking any chances. When I'm ready for help, I'll ask for it. Okay. Now, rush that handkerchief through fingerprinting. It'll show fine traces of copper filings. If they use a 10% solution of silver nitrate, dry it in the dark room and photograph it, they should get a good print. Now, get with it, will you? Right, Chief. I have to go. I don't want to be beaten to the kill. Oh, uh, boy. Yes, sir? This the main check room in the station? Yes, sir. You uh, work here all the time? Yes, sir, I do. Be interested in a thousand dollars real easy? Maybe. Why? There's a parcel I want. Checked here? Yeah, a small one, about uh, so by so. Want to let me look for it? I got a thousand bucks in small bills in this pocket. It's yours for ten minutes in that check room. How about it? Ah, uh, I found that wall. Uh -huh. Take the first turn to the left. You'll see a door marked check room. Keep out. It's the back way in. The door open? It will be in 30 seconds. Look around in the first three stalls. That's where anything small would be. The other stalls are for luggage. <laughs> so I just went in and took it. How do you like that, Jake? Oh, I got... I, I'm bored. Yes, he gave it to me just like that. Shows you what money will do, huh? I... I want to get out of here. This... This, this house is too lonely, too isolated. I'm... I, I'm worried. No, that's too bad. You need a drink? Oh, I wish this had never happened. Any trouble with Miller while I was gone? Oh, no, she's still locked in the home upstairs. We have to get rid of her, Jake. You mean kill her? Murder? She knows you. She knows me. She knows this house. She works for the district attorney. <laughs> Don't be a sap, Jake. There's only one way to keep her quiet. Oh, I got I cannot have anything to do with, with killing. Well, you don't have to actually do it. What? what? But you'll have to take the rap. You see, Jake, I want things to quiet down. They have to before I can start printing those bills. So, somebody has to be thrown to the wolves. I don't understand. The but... DA has to have somebody, Jake. If he gets you, you'll be satisfied. He can charge you with possession of forged plates, kidnapping, and murder. Then he can mark the case closed. <laughs> Somebody has to be the patsy. And now that you've done the plates, <laughs> you're really not much use for anything, huh? Why, you are and filthy. <laughs> Directly. Oh, you you're too old to tangle with me, Jake. I don't. Oh, think it over. It won't be so bad. You'll get used to it. Who's that? I will not kill. I won't. Shut up. 
Who could that be at the door? I don't know and I don't care and I wish I was dead. If you don't keep quiet, you'll get that wish right now. Now shut up. Uh, I'll get rid of whoever it is. Hello, Rogan. Uh, uh, now listen, I uh, think I'll step inside if you don't mind. I um, was wondering if a friend of mine was being kept in this house against her will. The answer is no. Sure? Sure. How did you find me? Well, you see, Roger, I got back from Bennington City quicker than you did. I had a police car following the train. You had to wait two hours, and I didn't. That gave me time to do a few little jobs here and still be at the check room when you got back from Bennington City. Do you get it? It follows. I didn't think you'd bite, but you did. I watched the whole operation at the check room and then followed you here. Now I think I'll take a look around this house. And I think you won't. Out of my way, Roger. Now, oh, make one move and I'll plug you. I mean it. Well, he's crazy, Mr. D.A. He's a maniac. I'm used to maniacs, Jake. I'll kill you. Give me that gun. <laughs> Back to Mr. District Attorney in just a moment. You know, one of the most important obligations of us here at home is to help keep the morale of our servicemen high. And one of the best ways to do this is by writing letters to them regularly and often. Now, this applies not only to the men in Korea, but also to those in other areas overseas, where mail call often is one of the few diversions. There are millions of American servicemen stationed all over the world, in Korea, Japan, Hawaii, England, France, and many other places. There are Navy units on duty on nearly all seas and in port throughout the world. And occupation duty is often dull to men anxious to return home, and the arrival of mail is one of the few bright spots in their day. It's one of the greatest gifts in the daily lives of these men to receive letters and mail call from relatives and friends. This campaign is to urge people who know a serviceman overseas to write to him. If you're a relative or friend of a serviceman, why don't you write to him today? Make his mail call something to look forward to. This message is brought to you as a public service. Drop that gun, Roger, or so help me, I'll break your arm. Oh, I'll break it. We'll... Oh. All right, get that gun, Jake. Yeah, 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 I've got it. Now, Roger, I'll show you what happens to guys who torture women. Oh, oh. What's the matter? Don't you like tangling with men? No, don't. Stop. Stop. Oh. Not so good with your fists, are you? You need boiling water. She's upstairs, Mr. P.A. All right. It's all right. Upstairs and to the right. Miss Miller. Miss Miller. I've never been so terrified of a man in my life. All right, he'll be taken care of, Miss Miller. He's a four-time loser, and he'll get a life. Boy, that was nice work, Chief, following him from the check room like that. Yeah, you see, Miss Miller, as soon as I found out where the house was located, I called Harrington. Mm -hmm. The thing was, I couldn't be sure that Roger would fall for the check room gag. Oh, Chief, what about Jake? Well, I've turned the plates over to the Treasury boys. I don't know. Five years, maybe ten He's throwing himself on the mercy of the court and pleading guilty. Hey, we better pick up that boy in the check room, taking a bribe, giving a parcel out with no claim check. Well, I, uh, I think we'll let him keep that, Harrington. Huh? Roger's thousand dollars. What? Yes, I, uh, I set that up with him beforehand, Harrington. <laughs> you know, he's a nice kid and wants to grow up to be a district attorney.
listen again next week for Mr. District Attorney. Our stars are Jay Johnston in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The script was written by Harry W. Junkin. The program was originated by Phillips H. Lord, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, and directed by Leslie Harris. Join us next week at the same time for another transcribed case history from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney.